Okay, well, European leaders clearly hate the populace. Here are two examples. Number one, Germany is evicting Ukrainian refugees because they are out of style. And, you know, we can't help you anymore. That was cute in 2022, but it's 2024, so move along. Uh, also, French President Macron is saying that it's time to strike Russia. And this boy brought the receipts. He brought a non-laminated paper map. Watch. So he says this map shows you that Ukraine is under attack from bases in Russia. So how do you explain it to Ukrainians that we need to protect these cities and especially Kharkiv? Well, if you, we tell them you're not allowed to reach bases from where the missiles are fired. In fact, we tell them we deliver weapons, you defend yourself. So we stay exactly within that framework. We owe it to them, though, he says, to neutralize military sites from which the missiles are fired, and then military sites from which Ukraine is attacked. But we must not allow Ukraine to hit targets in Russia, of course, civilian targets, which is all they take, uh, or military targets. Now, well, which is such garbage, because yes. over the past 24 hours, we've learned that Ukrainian intelligence sources have told Reuters, because they're in cahoots with them, right, that a Ukrainian drone targeted a radar system deep inside of Russian territory, which is all, which is part of Russia's early warning nuclear st uh, for detection of nuclear missiles. So they're literally targeting, and these are coming right from NATO, targeting Russia's nuclear um, targeting systems in, deep inside of Russia. Again, these are radar systems designed to strike down or target nuclear weapons fired against Russia. So NATO is now targeting them deep inside of Russia. It's not Ukrainians. Well, think Ukrainians about that. Ukrainians can't even tie their shoes right now. They don't, they're being thrown into the meat grinder. They have three days of training. Three. I'm not making that up. Three. Do you think these guys are the ones of doing all the targeting? NATO is handing them the targets, and they're just pressing a button like monkeys. Well, and how stupid is that? Because then that just leaves Russia to assume that every missile coming in is a nuke. Yeah, great point. Right, yeah. Right, you're literally... Yeah, so now what is the response? I mean, it's madness. Well, think about what he's saying there. He's like, you know, so far we've just been sending them the weapons and they say, we got it from here. We know how to use these. We're going to do it ourselves. But that's not doing so well. So what we can do is we could just sort of get them started, is what he's saying. We'll bomb Russia's military bases and they do the rest. It's kind of like I had this vision of a mise en place. You know what that is? Where like a sous chef chops up all the vegetables and then the main chef comes and puts it all together. Like, let us just do your chopping for you. We'll just get you started. I'm just going to get you started a little bit. Yeah. You know, and then you come like and finish it. Ratatouille. Yes. Like Ratatouille. Um, okay. <laughs> We're just kind of helping them basically. Only that is direct involvement in the war, isn't it? You don't just go there and be like, I'm just going to set you up. I'm just going to do a little turn down service. And now you're yeah, going to you finish it. You can't attack another country and say, yeah, 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 yeah. But we did that for, for this other country. We did that for Ukraine. We didn't actually do that. We, I mean, we did it, but it was, we, we did it for them. And we right. know, by the way, President Putin them. yesterday in response to Jen Stoltenberg coming out saying we need to start sending long range weapons into Ukraine and, and to fire inside of Russia. President Putin came out and said, um, most of your small countries have population densities located in certain cities. You're playing a very, very dangerous game right now. And we are ready and we're taking it very, very seriously, what you're doing and what you're saying. So, Russia, do you guys think, like, do these idiots think that President Putin is is bluffing? I don't. Like, are they really? France is lining up, sending in these weapons and then setting these targets and selecting and putting boots and trainers on the ground inside right. of Ukraine. Are they, this is Russia's literal... It's an existential crisis for that country, right? Well, yeah. Regardless of what you feel about Russia or you hate President Putin, it doesn't really matter. You're being surrounded by NATO forces right now. What would the United States do if the United States were surrounded by an, 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 an enemy force in Mexico, in Canada, on the Hawaiian Islands, off the coast of New Jersey, off the coast of Cuba? What would we do? We would attack the shit out of them is what right. we would do. And that's exactly what's about to happen. Right. Okay, so we, let's... We, we lose our shit and attack people that attack us when we're in their country. <laughs> so, right. Let alone our own. Yeah. We're, gonna, we're so mad that our people in Syria, our American forces that are in Syria illegally are getting attacked. We're like, see? Our, we're leaving you don't our, attack us? We're leaving we our forces here. vulnerable in Syria. Why the hell are our forces in Syria? You're not supposed to be there. It's an illegal occupation. 
Never mind. Mm -hmm. Anyway, go ahead. Okay, let's let's refer to this crazy uh, pl prop piece that Macron brought. Um, I had to zoom in on the map because I don't speak French. And also the fact that he's just holding up a color coded piece of paper is kind of funny. Um, so let's zoom in on it and see what he is asking us to sign off on. He wants NATO countries to go into Kharkiv. That's sort of what I gather from this, uh, even though the war is not there. So let's take a look at the current war. I can bring maps too. That's fun. So the, this is from Russian state media, RIA. What I've circled there is Kharkiv. That is not where the war is. So if you're saying, well, we could just, you know, help them out with the war, the war is where the red is and probably where the dark gray is in short order. That is the territory that's contested. That's the territory that Ukraine asked for money to take back. That's where the battle is. But what you see here is all the blue dots. No, no, let's leave that one, the last one up. The blue dots there is where Ukraine is striking. Why are they not striking where the war is? That's weird, right? The red is where Russia is. Russia is now putting military bases and military equipment in Kharkiv. They didn't before. Take a look at this map from just March. This, is the, this map is today. This one here is March. They're not in Kharkiv. Russia's not even along that northern border. They're holding the line where the war is. So why then does Europe and European leaders want to bring their forces and fight Russia where the war is not? That's weird, right? And then let's look at just how much that all of those lives that have been lost and all of that money that Western nations have sent how has that gone? Well, let's look at the progress of this map. This is from June of 2023, when we were told a major counteroffensive was starting. And then today, May 29th, well, nothing's happened. What you're looking at is no success on the battlefield at all. So now you see, because they're not succeeding, why they want to cluster the war totally away from where Russian forces are so that they can drag it out. And again, the red here is the territory that asked Russia to come and protect them from Ukrainian army advances. In February of 2022, Russia then moved in in March of that year after parliament voted to approve those mayor's requests. It was not just a whim of Putin. That's a lie. The people in those regions voted overwhelmingly to join Russia again because they asked for that special military uh, operation in the first place. And Ukraine has not been able to gain control. In fact, they continue to lose more territory along the red, which is why now NATO says, well, we don't have to go where the war is because we can't win that. But if we drag it out, we can move it where it's not in Kharkiv, and then we can drag it out for longer. Does that seem weird to you? Does that make any sense to you? Let's no. go where the war's not mm -hmm. and then start some shit, basically. Well, but yeah. Also, going to Kharkiv and then saying, telling American people that we're, we have really strong defenses. We've spent tens of billions of American dollars to shore up defenses around Kharkiv because, you know, we're worried about Russia coming in that area. And then they build nothing and they stole the money, which we covered here on the show about a month ago. Um, so all of those defenses that President Zelensky told us about, he said they're very strong. They weren't there. They were stolen, and it was uh, money laundered. Right. So this well, is what— it is, it is easier for the Ukrainians to say they're winning when there is no military that for them to fight, you know, there. I suppose. So, But, I mean, think about what they're asking you to support here, which is support a military operation where a war is not while untrained Ukrainian man— So it's like— I mean, if, you, if we could put that map up just one more time. So they're saying, NATO is saying, we'll go to Kharkiv. Well, that's not even that risky. That they, they don't have to die. Meanwhile, Ukrainian untrained men will go where the war is in this red territory of the map, and they will have to die. So we'll, you know, NATO soldiers should be relatively safe. Let them die. Let the Ukrainians die. Overnight, right? overnight we saw an interview with, uh, there was a couple of uh, Ukrainian soldiers who were captured by uh -huh. Russian forces and they had their wrists duct taped and they were being interviewed and they said, where did you come from? How did you get here? And they said, I was, I was working. I was working. I was going to my job. I was, I was dragged off the street yeah. by the conscription, the, the people snatchers. I was taken to some facility. I didn't even know where it was because I was blindfolded. And I was 
I was in a warehouse, basically in a training facility for like three days and three days. And then I was brought here and he didn't even know what town he was in. He didn't even know what town until the Russians told him what town he was in. The Ukrainians aren't even telling them where they're being sent to. They're just being thrown out there. That's awful. And he said, I just learned where we are because you told me where we are. Right. So now that Macron has used this map and to sell us the idea of going to the war, are you sold? What kind of crazy person would want that? Well, this crazy guy, I guess. So what do you think? Your map, your map looks way more legit than his, I just got to say. Oh, well, my map came from Russian state media. So, you know, I don't <laughs> take. And I use that map so that we can. And, and I cr usually cross check it with the Ukrainian official war map. And it, usually they are spot on together. They, they Yeah, there's like a the little very, bit of difference between the Russian well, one and Crimea, the Ukrainian one. Because they don't, they don't well, yeah, mark I'm just, Crimea. But I'm yeah. talking about where strikes have happened over the past 24 hours and troop movements. They're usually very, very similar. Yeah, there's a little bit of favoritism each side, you know, you're, you know, but for the most part, they're pretty similar. Right. And we kind of check them back and forth between the two sources. Yeah. Um, just so, you know, it's not like. And, and because Ukraine, because this map that, um, that Macron is putting up, it, even that seems to show he wants to put forces again where the war is not like, let, let the Ukrainians keep, you know, keep dying. So anyway, please don't pretend that you care about Ukrainians, Macron, or any other NATO leader, or you would make a serious bid for peace. But instead, Ukrainians are now being kicked out of their refugee homes in Germany. According to German newspaper The Build, Ukrainians have to vacate apartment for asylum seekers. Well, wait a minute. Aren't they asylum seekers? No, actually, because they were given special special citizenship allowance when they got to Germany because Germany was being so nice to these white skinned refugees. But now Germany is kicking them out. One thousand seven hundred Ukrainians have to leave their apartment in the next few weeks. And because that is because the district says they urgently need it for asylum seekers from Syria, Afghanistan and Turkey. And those people have real asylum benefits and the Ukrainians do not. So where do you think those people will go? Well, it would be super nice if we could negotiate for peace so that they could go home, but we're not really interested in that. So now they're on their own for housing. So anyway, if you were the kind of person who was super excited about being kind to Ukrainians, but did not ever consider peace, well, that, was, that kind of fell flat, right? Poked a lot of holes in that. So let us know what you think of this and whether or not you're going to swallow this um, poison juice of war. Coming up here on the show, we're going to talk about Denver as a sanctuary city. They are handing out a handbook now for other sanctuary cities on how to bring illegal immigrants into their cities. Um, and, uh, you know, because Denver has done such a stellar job of this, bringing in tens of thousands of illegal immigrants. Uh, we'll talk about that. Uh, but first, our friend of the show, Peter McCullough, Dr. Peter McCullough from The Wellness Company. He's been leading the charge in this fight right now, not mincing words when it comes to what is coming our way. Bird flu is the next disease X, he said in a recent podcast conversation. McCullough has elaborated that not only is bird flu the next pan planned pandemic like we saw with COVID, but it's confirmed to be a human manipulated game of function strain of the virus. And to the surprise of absolutely no one, a former Gates Foundation director is the current director of the USDA Poultry Research Lab in Athens, Georgia, where the manipulated strain originated. You can't even make this stuff up. But what do we do? Well, according to Dr. McCullough and his world-renowned colleagues at the Wellness Company, now is the time to stockpile meds, which is why I'm so grateful to have a contagion emergency kit from the Wellness Company. You guys need to get these things. They've got Z-Packs in there, Tamiflu, uh, Budasodonide. I, I never can say that one correctly. Um, uh, hydroxychloroquine, Ivermectin, all of them right inside of this special, um, special contagion kit that you need to get. So all you need to do, you should have it in your house. Just keep it on your shelf, in your house, in your medicine cabinet. These are all the things we were told we weren't allowed to get. <laughs> we weren't even allowed to talk about um, a few months or a few years ago during COVID. You weren't allowed to talk about them. And they totally banned people like Dr. McCullough from even mentioning this stuff. 
Um, and we now know how effective it absolutely was in saving lives. So right now, go to twc.health slash redacted to get your your get 10% off at checkout and free shipping. TWC.health slash redacted. Um, peace of mind for the unexpected moment in your life. These are things that like you should just have on hand. You know, don't wait to order it. Keep it in your house. TWC.health slash redacted. Get 10% off at checkout right now to get your um, contagion kit that you should have on hand for whatever they throw at us next. Good to see everyone tonight. Um, Rainus DuPont says free speech on redacted, but not on YouTube. Yeah. I mean, we've been banned like four, three or four times. I think on this show, we've gotten uh, community strikes where they've blocked us for weeks at a time because we were reading, literally reading Pfizer's own documents right here on the show. And, uh, they called it misinformation, right? Didn't they call it misinformation? It's like, no, we're reading yeah. the court documents that Pfizer was forced to present in court and didn't matter. Didn't matter. They called it misinformation. So um, anyway, it's crazy. Uh, so we try to do, we, we try to be as open as we can here. And um, these platforms, these big tech platforms love to censor us. They, they uh, uh, took down my- They definitely censor chat. Oh yeah, they definitely, people wonder like sometimes like, oh, well, when they type a comment, like why does it not show up or YouTube blocks comments on a regular basis. That's why we love Rumble so much um, um, because they don't do that. So good to see everyone over on Rumble and on X as well. Um, yeah, they, they just banned my TikTok channel. You know, we, we published our clips over there on my TikTok channel and I had a couple, I think like over, easily over a million subscribers on TikTok, Clayton Morris. I think it's real Clayton Morris on TikTok. If you want to follow me there, they, they banned us twice in the past, like three weeks. So, and we had to reach out to them and they, they flipped our channel back on, but who knows? It's, I think it's because of our coverage of uh, Gaza. They don't like that. They don't like the truth being out there about that. Well, here's some more truth for you tonight. Um, and Natalie had to step out. She is not feeling well. So if you do not hear Natalie, I said, go lay down. She is not feeling well. So, She's a trooper for being here, but she is laying down in bed right now. So I'm going to bring her some hot tea in a few minutes here. But anyway, let's talk about this. I really hope you enjoyed watching this video. You know, YouTube thinks that you'll actually like this next video right here. It's personalized based on your own viewing habits. So if you watch the video, please leave a comment. Let us know what you think about it. And we will see you next time, everyone.